Hey guys, I wanted to give you a couple of helpful hints today on working on the cardstock series models in the 285th and 144th scale. We have many cardstock models available now and, uh, and I've learned a few things about assembling them and finishing them. I want to pass these things on to you. Here's uh, just a basic structure put together. It's been glued together. Um, the one thing I want to pass on to you guys is this here tacky glue. Tacky glue is the best glue if it's available wherever you are. Um, if there's another brand like this just go to your arts and crafts store and ask them if they have something like tacky glue. What this is is basically just like a white glue uh, just like your Elmer's glue but it's a lot thicker so when you put your parts together they tend to stick together a little better. They don't want to fall right apart. Um, you know, you still have to kind of jig things up and get everything squared up real nice, but it makes it a lot easier when your pieces aren't just falling apart after the glue is on. So this kind of holds it together uh, for a few seconds while you get your act together. So that's the first thing I want to tell you about. Now, another thing, once you've got this thing glued together, what I've been doing with mine is I've been spraying them with a primer, spraying the whole thing just to kind of seal the uh, the mat board or paper if you will, card stock, whatever you like to call it. And then I'm going around with some uh, vinyl spackling and filling in the little edges here where they uh, come together. There's little tabs and slots on each side so there's going to be little areas where there's tiny little gaps that you're going to want to fill in. So I've been filling it with the spackle. Now the problem with uh, using the spackle, one of the things you run into is after you put it on and you let it dry, you're going to want to take a sanding block with a little like 180 or 220 grit sandpaper and you're going to want to knock that spackle off and get it down flush. The problem with that is if you sand a little too much and get into the, uh, the mat board or the cardstock, it'll kind of fuzz up a little on you. And then, you know, it's, it's a little difficult when you go to finish it, when you're going to paint it. Um, what I've done to combat that so far is after sanding if I see a little fuzzy spot I'll spray it again with a little more primer and then I'll just very lightly sand down the, the fuzzy bits that have soaked up the primer and that usually does it okay. Um, but one thing you can do to avoid that situation entirely if you want to take an extra step is get some sanding sealer. Um, this is going to cost you about fifteen dollars in, uh, in a quart can like this unless you can find like a small pint can I bought this at Home Depot today and this is the only size they had. So this is probably a lifetime supply of sanding sealer. What you can do is you can take this stuff and brush it on the model. Let me show you here real quick how simple this is. This is meant for, uh, for wood. Normally what it does is it seals the wood. It, uh, it brings up the grain a little bit and then you sand it down and you get a really nice finish. As you can see here probably it has kind of just a, a white milky look to it. It's real thin, it's water based. But if you take some of this and just brush it on the model, you might be able to see that it's soaking into the, uh, into the mat board. Um, mainly being concerned with the corners, but you can go ahead and do the whole thing if you like. What this will do is it'll seep into the material and dry and really strengthen the model a lot. It'll give it, uh, you know, it'll feel like a plastic model when it's done because it kind of in a sense will be once it soaks in this this acrylic uh, material. So you just brush it on like that. You can go around the inside too if you want, but that's basically it. You don't want to put a whole ton of it, but just get enough on there to cover it. And you set that aside and let me show you one I did earlier today. This is a model I did earlier today. Not sure if the camera is going to pick this up or not, but it does have just a slight gloss finish to it. Um, that's the sanding sealer. And once, uh, once it's dry, you can just kind of knock it down a little bit in case there's any fuzzies sticking up. Just go over it real quick. And then you can go ahead and, and do your, uh, your plastering, your speckling. This is just super simple. You just take a tiny bit of it and just get it along those edges where those little tabs are. 
and just fill those in. If you get a little bit over the window, don't worry about it. Once it dries, it just flicks right off of there. But if you are worried about it, get rid of it now. That's fine. So you just go around all the four sides, being careful not to fill in any detail like these uh, bits over the window here. And you go all the way around the model and do that. Now I've already done the back side and let that dry just to show you what it looks like when it's all dry. Now once it's dry you just take your sanding block with some 220 and just really lightly go over this. And now that's done. Now I'm going to spray this uh, real quick with a little bit of primer just so you can see what it looks like. Now, let me get, get where the camera can see it. Now as you can see along this edge, the tabs that were sticking up had a bit of, uh, I guess what you could call end grain if you were to compare it to wood. And that would typically soak in this, uh, this primer quite a bit. But being that we used the sanding sealer on it first to seal all that, we get a nice uniform finish here with the primer. So the sanding sealer first, Get that on there, let it dry. Uh, the, the can says it takes about an hour to dry. It doesn't take quite that long. But then again, I live in the desert, so maybe it'll take an hour where you live. So put the sanding sealer on, then do your spackling. Get that on there. Sand off the extra spackling. And then I like to do a primer, and I like to use good old Rust-Oleum Automotive Gray Primer. This is my favorite primer. Uh, aside from ones that you would shoot through a professional gun. But anything that comes in a rattle can, this is my favorite. I'm not a big fan of Rust-Oleum paints in general, but I do like their primer, so that's what I use on my models. So, just to review, tacky glue, that's the glue to use if you can get it. If you can't, just any old regular uh, Elmer's glue would be fine. The sanding sealer is an optional step. I'm liking it. I just started using it today and so far I'm liking it. Spackling I think is probably bordering on mandatory if you want to take care of those little areas that need a little touch up. You can see on the corner there where you would probably want to put a little spackling in there. And then once that's done sanding it down and then spraying it with a nice primer and then the painting system of your choice. All that being said you could glue this together Grab a can of whatever color paint you want and just spray it, throw it down on your game board and start playing, and it'd be just fine. But if you're a little pickier and you want to go through these extra steps, it really, as you can see, doesn't take long at all. It just takes an extra couple of minutes for each model, and uh, I think it makes a big difference once you get them done. Okay, just one more thing before I let you guys go here. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of uh, new things. Uh, one still under development and that is the Intercontinental Hotel in 285th scale. This is the hotel in uh, Kabul, Afghanistan that was just recently attacked by the Taliban. Um, the, this part of the model is completely done. There's a, there's a bit that goes here which is the entrance into the ballroom area and a bit that goes on top that has some uh, interesting roof details and those two pieces are going to be resin castings and they're actually uh, in the rubber right now. The mold has been poured so we can't show you those masters right now but the rest of this is a, is a cardstock model or a mat board model and uh, it's very cool the way it's gone together uh, the only piece you don't see here is uh, inside here there's some pieces that you paint blue and then put in to give the uh, window appearance. I didn't put those in yet because this is just kind of the first uh, prototype, the first test unit. Um, but it's a pretty cool model. As you can see it's a very big model for, for 285th scale. I think it's uh, I say like seven, no, 15 inches. Yeah, about 15 inches this way. and. Well, it's about a little over nine inches that way. So it's a real big model. Now, this is a model that I'd love to do in some of the bigger scales, but as you can see, even in 285th scale, it's a big model. This would be in 15 millimeter 
uh, it would be well, nearly three times as big, so 45 inches long, and that's just uh, it's just not feasible. So this is the only way we're going to see this model is in 285th. Um, but pretty cool model. It's coming along real nice. It'll be available on the website probably tomorrow. And the other thing I want to show you was just a interesting little bridge that I just made. This is also in 285th scale. The reason why I wanted to show this is because uh, people that are uh, kind of hesitant to buy models that are made of mat board or cardstock or paper, if you will, is uh, worrying about durability. Now this model here is cardstock, same thing that all the other models are made out of, the, uh, the other cardstock series models. And uh, as you can see, there's not a lot to it. It's, uh, it's very minimal structure and it hasn't been treated in any way. I didn't use the sanding sealer on it, which would make it even stronger. This is just wood, uh, wood, not wood, uh, cardstock that's been painted, and that's it. But I wanted to demonstrate a little something. If I set the model here on these blocks and take this steel block here that weighs one pound, or just over one pound, and set it on top, it doesn't move one bit. And now, of course, if I slam my fist down on it, you know, I'd crush it, but, uh, but it's fairly durable. This is gonna, it's gonna take some abuse. You don't have to be too, you know, worried about breaking it, bending it, or whatever. So, for the people that are seeing what appears to be paper, just a heavy, heavy cardstock mat board, and saying, well, I don't know, that's just not real durable, just, uh, have a look at that bridge supporting uh, just over a pound of steel over a, almost a 12 inch span. Move these out as far as possible. It's about a 12 inch span right there and it's supporting one pound. So it gets pretty durable. And then when you use the uh, sanding sealer on the, uh, on the mat board or uh, cardstock, it gets even stronger because it saturates into the material and, and binds with it and becomes almost like a composite becomes very very strong so just wanted to share that with you it's a real neat model I don't see this having much mass appeal at all I'd be surprised if I sold a dozen of these but that wasn't really the point it was just something cool I wanted to make so I made it and I wanted one for myself so I did um, but it does it does prove a point that the cardstock models are very durable that's it for today hope all these uh, tips help you out and I hope uh, we've satisfied some of your concerns about card models how they can be finished and their durability and strength they're a real good alternative to the uh, cast resin models they're much cheaper they go to be go together much quicker and uh, you can populate a big city on a, on a real tight budget have fun guys